cannot wage a war without rumors, without media, without propaganda. Any military planner that plans for a war, if he doesn't put media propaganda on top of his agenda, he's a bad military. Okay, fine. Okay, I'll give you a countdown. Ten. No. Not yet, Ahmad. Not yet. Yalla. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Q. Q. My fellow citizens. The United Nations Security Council has not lived up to its responsibilities, so we will rise to ours. Saddam Hussein and his sons must leave Iraq within 48 hours. Their refusal to do so will result in military conflict, commenced at a time of our choosing. For their own safety, all foreign nationals, including journalists and inspectors, should leave Iraq immediately. Many Iraqis can hear me tonight in a translated broadcast, and I have a message for them. If we must begin a military campaign, it will be directed against the lawless men who rule your country, and not against you. Your fate will depend on your actions, and it will be no defense to say, I was just following orders. It is too late for Saddam Hussein to remain in power. We will tear down the apparatus of terror, and we will help you to build a new Iraq that is prosperous and free. I mean, I've never, ever in my life I thought I would live to see this. Ever. Mr. Bush is العرب العرب ساكتين وراضين ونايمين لما يكون واحد عنده حماس مستعد يعادي اي واحد حق ان انت مثلا تتكلم 100% يا اخي انت تكون قاعد في بيتك انت تطلع من بيتك ما تاخدش اقف انا هو المشكله الوقت مش تصدمه يا جدعان المشكله في الشعب اللي هناك يعني هو بيقول له اطلع بره كده يا اخي ده لو فضل 10 في العراق باقيين حيين هيكون صدام في الوسط ايه ده يا ابو الموضوع ان ربنا ينصر هو صدام حسين في الاول كان غلطان ان انا اخش اغزو الكويت والكارك اللي ده ده معاك لكن كل الموقف اللي هو فيه دلوقتي To find now people, you know, just normal workers, no intellectuals, you know, basically saying that Saddam is our hero, that says something. That America managed to, well, the American policy and the Bush managed to galvanize people towards Saddam in a way that is just so amazing. It's amazing. My own feeling is that the message of Al Jazeera is, first of all, educational, to educate the Arab masses on something called democracy, respect of the other opinion, uh, the free debate, really free debate, no taboos, nothing is called taboo, everything should be dealt with intelligently and uh, with openness, and to try by using all these things to shake up these rigid societies, to awaken them, tell them, wake up, wake up, there is a world around you, something is happening in the world, you are still sleeping, wake up. This is the message of Al Jazeera. <laughs> اوكي وداليا بالنسبه للتاشيره حق المصورين المصورين سافروا ولا لا 
حصلت الموافقة أيه. وممكن يسافرون سبلغنا سين جاكر يروح يراجع السفارة يأخذ التأشيرة هم مش عارفين الأغراض هذا النواحي بس خالد بس النواحي تمام توقف متى بتجي في بغداد يا أستاذ العزيز هذه ما فيها مشكلة Okay. This is our working gear, huh? So when are you going to But I don't think we're gonna wear all this, you know, this and camera. I don't think so. اللي نبغى نحط لكم الصورة بالتالي. إحنا كل مواقعنا اللي موجودة بالموصل وبغداد وبالبصرة أبلغنا الجهات المعنية في واشنطن. البنتاجون. عن طريق المكتب. وبلغناهم برسائل رسمية. وين اللوكيشن بالنسبة لمكتبنا في بغداد. وين مكتبنا بالنسبة للمراسلين اللي موجودين في البصرة واللي موجودين في الموصل في أي فندق؟ زكي إبراهيم الحمد لله على السلامة يا أخي لا لا أي نو أي نو يور أنا ماشي مع الجماعة دول على سنت كوم أوكي أي ويل نوت يعني إنفولف في الجزيرة في أي حاجة دونت وري أوكي سيد ثانك يو What are these people preparing for a concert or something? Sand Calm Blues. We've seen some uh, movement of Republican forces south. We've been saying that for about a week now. There are a number of suspicious sites throughout Iraq that we have sensitive site exploitation teams. I don't have specific information on where Saddam Hussein is. If I did, we'd, we'd go find him there right now. But I can tell you it's about war, more than one man. It's about more than 55 men. I mean, it's about the 23 million people of Iraq and bringing them freedom. And that's what we're really here to do. Hi, how are you? Josh Rushing. Hi. What was your calling in BBC? Well, a long time ago. Yes, a very long time ago, in, in Bush House. Yes. Yeah, how are you? Fine, how are you? Who are you working for? Jazeera. Of course. <laughs> Why, of course? <laughs> the BBC eventually works for Jazeera. Well. Hello. Hi, good. We believe that Iraq has weapons of mass destruction that they had the will to use them against us. When? What do you mean, when? When, when did they use them against you? That they have the will to use them against us? Uh, when? I mean, do you think Saddam... Sa when you say someone has Sa the Sa will, Sa Sa that's like saying... I mean, Sa Saddam, Saddam was threatening the U.S. with weapons of mass destruction? Yes. When? That's news to me, I'm sorry. Now, he, this is, now oh. this is news to me. Okay. Look. When when did Saddam threaten the U.S. with weapons of mass destruction? Oh, I, I see. I, I'm sorry. I misunderstood your question. We believe he had the will to give them the forces to use against us. And, well, go ahead. I'm just conveying to you what people are saying. They're saying that the U.S. is inventing a purpose as it goes along. In the beginning, it was weapons of mass destruction. And then the whole thing transformed into removing Saddam from power. So... Why do they think we're doing it? What do they think our motives are? No one knows. I mean, people think really? you're there. People think you're there to basically uh, control uh, the oil of Iraq, control the Iraqi uh, foreign uh, politics, uh, to control the uh, region. I won't back down off of my point when we talk about our intent in this 
in what we're doing. We're not here to, to, to occupy an Arab land. We're not here to take their oil. We're not here to, to kill Arabs or take mosques or any of the other myriad of reasons. The American media were hijacked by some people within the administration so as to be used as uh, a leverage for inducing some fears within the American public. Every time he used to elevate the level of danger from yellow to orange to uh, violet or purple, I don't know what, okay, so as to make the Americans always feel that they are under siege and there is a threat, and this threat was represented by Saddam Hussein and Iraq. This guy could develop weapons of mass destruction and give them to Osama bin Laden to attack us. So when, when you, a polling uh, institute comes to you, do you feel threatened? You want to say, yes, of course I feel threatened. Do you know that this threat comes from a guy called Saddam Hussein? Huh? Is it? So you him. بغداد وين المايك ماجد؟ ايوه لا نعم سامعك سامعك نفس المايك فخمين في شيء عندك؟ بغداد؟ اه قصفوا الان ثلاث صواريخ متتاليه على هدف واحد اوكي عنده ثلاث صواريخ قصف يقول لك خيت يس They failed to get Saddam. See, what they were hoping for is 40 cruise missiles falling on Baghdad, then 400 paratroopers going in and finishing the job. Well, that failed. They bombed this uh, place in, north, uh, in northern Iraq. Smashed completely. Pulverized. Dead bodies in mass. I mean, why? We got the pictures and we showed them. We showed the but pictures. We give of course, we'll get, we'll get grief from the Americans for showing these pictures because we're, we're just, uh, we'll be inciting rebellion and we'll be basically instigating anti-American sentiments. I mean, I'm, so, I'm sorry. They can't have their cake and eat it. I mean, yeah. Okay, you are the most powerful nation on earth. I agree. You can defeat everybody. I agree. You can crush everybody. I agree. But don't ask us to love it as well. <laughs> the question is, who is going to stop here? Or to, to, to stop the United States? Who is the going United, to do the United that? States. You need a new, uh, new the group. United, you need a powerful group. The United too. States is going to stop the United States. I have absolute confidence in the American Constitution. And I have absolute confidence in the ability of the American people. The United States people are going to stop the United States in time. Make way, make way, come on. Make way, make way, make way, make way. Civilian casualties are being reported on the battlefield through a number of sources. We regret the loss of any civilians on the battlefield, and we've done all that we can reasonably do to prevent that from happening either from the air or on the ground. But we know for certain that there have been civilians killed in this operation because of the decisions taken by the regime to put them out in front, to hide behind them, to use pregnant women to blow up cars at checkpoints. We've seen this happen on the battlefield. Those are not being investigated by us at this point in time. Thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good day. Here is 
uh, command headquarters, which you call, what's your little phrase? Central Command? Yeah, Central Com. you have a little short version of it? Centcom yeah. News Desk? Centcom, right, okay. Centcom. Huh? Centcom. Is C-E-N-T, C-O-M? C-E-N-T, yeah, it sounds too much like sitcom. You gotta be <laughs> careful. Centcom, Centcom. Uh -huh. with U.S. Uh, Army and State Department spokesmen, right? Mm -hmm. I've gone live on Al Jazeera, and their questions were, extremely combative. They are biased towards Saddam's regime. Mm -hmm. I will give you one example. When they cut away to commercial, mm -hmm. they have a uh, probably a 30 to 60 second montage of video that plays. Yeah, promo video. It promo is montage. American warplanes, American bombs exploding, American tanks mm -hmm. going across the desert, and, and then a, a, a baby child with bandages on her head crying. Mm -hmm. And it never shows Iraqi yeah, you troops. troops. You never cheating, see uh, a, a wounded POW. No, you, you don't see Iraqi troops. Uh, you know, yeah. taking hostage families or forcing people to fight or but firing on their own. Pictures, or which brings, that brings us back to my first point. Nobody has those pictures. We as Americans, given all the historic, psychological, political problems vis-a-vis -vis the Arab relations, have to work a little harder. And I repeat, every one of these damaging assertions, and I have no reason to disbelieve them because they certainly, there's no reason why Saddam Hussein and the Ba'athist regime isn't doing it, mm -hmm. isn't using human shields. But nevertheless, we don't have the picture of it. And that's why pictures of these things are so desperate. That child was basically another Iraqi weapon of mass destruction. Ah. Democracy. So here's my point. This guy Saddam is probably the biggest threat to Arab Muslims mm -hmm. that exist on the planet today. Right. He's probably killed more Muslims than so anyone on the planet oh, no today. Question. Yeah. No, no question about it. So Al Jazeera should be reporting him as that rather than, than protecting him as that because of they, I think they owe it to their audience right. to say, this is a threat. This is a, a bad guy. If the Muslim world doesn't know it, that's because they're not reporting it. Mm -hmm. I, I think they're that ubiquitous in, 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 in the Muslim world. These people, you know, the whole world, but particularly Arabs, who, when we always empathize with Iran, have been watching Israeli troops, especially in the last year, crashing into civilian districts, okay, in Gaza, in the West Bank. So what they saw was an Israeli army, which is highly technological, right? And the officers are all European looking, you know, like you look, like I look. And these images, unfortunately, in the psyche, in the Arab psyche, are mingling now. And the Israeli soldier and the American soldier become one image. And the Palestinian civilians who are being brutalized be somehow blend into the image of this collateral damage, you know, or accidental bombings. And it all becomes one image, and that's disaster for the American side of it in the in Arab perception. تفضل يا بوش شوف هذه المآسي ترضى بهيجي انت ترضى بهيجي ظلم انت اكو عندك انسانيه اذا عندك انسانيه تقدر تشوف طفله وهي تصيح ماما بابا وين الانسانيه وين الضمير وين الله We know that Al Jazeera has a pattern of playing propaganda over and over and over again. 
what they do is, is when there's a bomb goes down, they, they grab some children and some women and pretend that the bomb hit the women and the children. And it seems to me that it's up to all of us to try to tell the truth, to say what we know, to say what we don't know, and recognize that we're dealing with people that are perfectly willing to, to lie to the world to attempt to further their case. And to the extent people uh, lie, ultimately they are caught lying and they lose their credibility. And one would think it wouldn't take very long for that to happen, dealing with people like this. How about Thank the footage you. of the children? Uh, we wanted to show that any war has a human cost. Okay? We focused on that. There is a human cost because we care for the Iraqi people. We are not like Rumsfeld who says we care for the Iraqi people. He doesn't care at all. Okay? We care for them. We are Arabs like them. We are Muslims like them. Your heart can be with your people. Your soul can be with your people. But as a journalist, your primary duty is to get information. Absolutely right. Otherwise, you would be something else. You'd be a soldier or a diplomat. I know what you mean by professionality. I okay. I am representing my uh, station, but I am also representing my people. You want to help your people get information for your people, get news for your people. Yeah, and don't hey, he's a nice guy, the lieutenant. You know, don't hesitate. You go to him and say, I really appreciate it. If you could, you could interview him. He'll he'll get on camera in front of you. You know, but just don't be competitive. That's all. Smile and and, and be friendly. Well, we are facing war here, you know. I know, but you know what I mean. I'm talking about the... the yeah, the, but you were advising me to smile. Well, yes, how, but I meant... How could I... No, I don't really mean that. How could I, I, I smile, didn't really, how could I no, smile while yeah. my people will be okay. killed but in I Iraq, you know? I was told early this morning that perhaps our troops were captured, and if there is somebody captured, I expect those people to be treated humanely. Bill and then Mike. The Rocky TV has shown what appear to be American POWs and also what appear to be American dead. I expect them to be treated, the POWs, I expect to be treated humanely. And uh, uh, just like we're treating the prisoners that we have captured humanely. I don't understand. Yes? I don't understand. Sir, from yes. where you came from America? From Kansas. Please, please. Why do you come? Because I was told to come here. I just follow orders. You come to kill, to kill Iraqi people? No, or? I come to fix broke stuff. And I, I told to shoot only if I'm shot at. And they shot at me first, so I shoot back. I don't, I don't want to kill anybody. Uh, what's your name? Specialist Joseph Hudson, 585-650287. Where do you come from? Coming from El Paso, Texas. Texas. Say again? Uh, why do you come from Texas to Iraq? I, I follow orders. What's your name? What's your name? Edgar. What's your name? Edgar. My, my, country? my name is Edgar from the United States. My name, my name is Edgar from the United States. What's your name? Sergeant James Riley. Where are do you come from? Texas. You come from Texas? Yes. How, how old are you? 30. Yes? 30. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 
اذا مشاهدينا كانت هذه الصور التي حصلنا عليها من التلفزيون العراقي والتي تظهر عددا من القتلى والاسرى الذين سقطوا في معركه Rumsfeld is saying parading the uh, footage of the captives uh, is a violation of the Geneva Convention. What do you call Guantanamo Bay? What do you call the Iraqi soldiers parading yesterday on American television? What do you call bombing a city without authorization from the UN, UN Security Council? Now there is a Geneva Convention. The decision by Al Jazeera to broadcast such material is deplorable, and we call on them to desist from future broadcasts of such a nature. Are we sure about this news? Are we sure? Okay. There's a lot of pressure, obviously, on Al Jazeera to withdraw those pictures. Were you surprised by the reaction to those photographs? Um, I think uh, they were understandable. The reactions didn't really surprise me. If you're an American and you're seeing dead Americans, of course it's going to um, affect you and you're going to have an emotional reaction. But, you know, let the people understand that this is a war and people are dying. It's not a clean war, it's a very messy war, uh, it will continue to get messier. Your journalists have, have a position on the war. Are they capable of being objective? That's a good question, but I ask the same question. I'll answer the question by asking the question, are any U.S. journalists objective about this war? Are any of the news broadcasts that I tune into not taking a position on the war? And that's absolutely that shown... by your position, then? No, but I'm just trying to show that this word objectivity is almost uh, a mirage. Um, you know, if you're in the States, I mean, the, the amount of rage directed against us because we showed soldiers who had died in combat or in an ambush, they were soldiers who had died in a war zone. If there was rage directed against us, if there was no agenda, if there was no, if there was true neutrality, there would be a welcoming of any and all information from all sides. The night they showed the POWs and the dead soldiers, Al Jazeera showed them. It was powerful because America doesn't show those kind of images. We, most of the news in America won't show really gory images, and this showed American soldiers in uniform strewn about a floor, a coal tile floor, and it was. Uh, Revolting. It was absolutely revolting. It made me sick at my stomach. And then what hit me was the night before there had been some kind of bombing in Basra and Al Jazeera had shown uh, images of the people and, the, and they were equally if not more horrifying than the images were. And I remember having seen it in the Al Jazeera office and thought to myself, wow, that, that, that's, that's gross. That's, 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 that's bad. And then going away and probably eating dinner or something, and you know it, it didn't affect me as much. So the impact that had on me, me realizing that I, I just saw people on the other side, and those Al people in the Al Jazeera of office, Al Jazeera office, must have felt the way I was feeling that night, and it upset me on a profound level that I wasn't as bothered as much the night before. It, it makes me hate war, but it doesn't make me believe that we're in a world that can live without war yet. Day by day, the Iraqi people are closer to freedom.
القيادات العسكريه تعطي الاخبار لوكالات الانباء هذولاك بيبثوها على اساس اخبارهم انا وانت نستخدمها على نست... نستلمها على اساس اخبار اعلاميه محايده موثوقه هي اخبار دعائيه العسكر نفسه فبيقول انه سيطرنا على جسر على نهر دجله لا يوجد في دجله من العماره الى بغداد لا يوجد الا جسر واحد اسمه جسر الكوت وهذا جسر الكوت هو بنفس الخبر وبدات القوات تقصف مدينه الكوت بالزحف نحوها طيب اذا انت لسه ما وصلت تزحف نحوها شلون شلون اخذت الجسر والكلام طبعا هذا اذا استاذ عبد الجبار انا نجيب يعني الجرافيك بروديوسر نحاول نعمل تلخيص للجزء ذا نعم. يبقى على الهواء نعم. يبقى افضل شيء جديد ونحن نواصل هذه التغطيه لتطورات الحرب على العراق جاء في الاخبار اليوم حتى ناتي على الفوات يقول هذا الخبر انه 30 كيلو متر على المشارف الجنوبيه لمدينه بغداد بس وش قد المشارف الجنوبيه لمدينه بغداد هو بكيفه يقدر يسويها 100 كيلو متر ران ثري كات ثانك يو ريما ويل دان جود جاب Al Jazeera has been critical, but at the same time they've been quite open to us, uh, inviting the U.S. government officials to speak directly on their channel and express the American point of view, and uh, that's good. While we may disagree with certain editorial policies that they follow, we do have respect for them as an institution that has wide reach in the Arab world. And uh, as such, uh, we feel the need to have their points of view and the points of view of some of their guests balanced by our own points of view. Mm. اجت عند الناس انه كيف كيف حصل يعني بعد اول ثلاث اربع ايام الاعلام الرسمي مصري سوري والصحافه بتقول لك كم اسقطنا 100 طائره اليوم و50 دبابه و و و واذ بعد اربع ايام اسرائيل من بسينا واسرائيل برام الله واسرائيل بالقدس كان في صدمه عند الناس من اول هالحرب هذه وانتم تقولوا لنا the heroic resistance يعني المقاومة البطلة والهذا والأمريكيين أخطأوا حساباتهم وحتستمر العملية شهور يعني وكأنه الإعلام العربي اشتغل بعواطفه وبي إيش كان بيريد يحصل معلش يعني مثلا قضية أن البصرة إحنا سمعنا التحليلات إن خلال يومين راح تسقط تكون إن الشيعية موجودة في ولا شيعي وأنا أعتقد إن الوضع اختلف تماما احنا بي يعني احنا حتى لما نحل كل واحد تبقى له رؤيته وجهه نظر What do you think? Ah, uh, this war American and British people lose the war. Will lose the war. Yeah. Why? You, you lose the war. Why? Why? Because Iraqi have uh, These are the Shia of southern uh, Iraq army. who are and receiving the Americans with flowers. Uh, force. You lose the oars. We now watch Al Jazeera, and uh, I can tell what what they're showing, and then I can tell what they're not showing by by choice. Uh, same thing when I watch Fox on the other end of the spectrum. Um, I know which of the stories that we put out that they're picking up on and which ones they're not giving much bounce. It benefits Al Jazeera to play to Arab nationalism because that's their audience, just like Fox. Been, place to American patriotism for the exact same reason, American nationalism, because of that's their demographic audience and that's what they want to see. The part that disappoints me is that Arab nationalism has to include the anti-Americanism. The, the Israelis and the United States are trying to change everything in this area in order to suit the present of Israel in it, you know. See, the problem with the Middle East, everything is an Israeli conspiracy, everything. If a water pipe breaks in the center of Damascus, it will, blame, it will be blamed on the Israelis, instead of blaming it on our incompetence. <laughs> and don't tell me because it's Americanization. I mean, yeah, 
America is dominating, but the rest of the world is not castrated. People are against this war and people are resisting. And people matter. I hope everybody in the world will get the American passport one day, so this world will be quiet. God. This is a defeatist attitude. Eventually, you will have to find a solution that doesn't include bombing people into submission. Democratize or I'll shoot you. It just doesn't, doesn't work this way. And we have uh, from Washington, uh, Mr. Jeffrey Stenberg, the political analyst. Uh, Mr. Stenberg, do you say that the Americans uh, want to stay uh, militarily in Iraq? And الموجود في العراق حاليا يرضي كثيرا البنتاغون وفي بعض أوساط البيت الأبيض أيضا ترضى عنه ويريدون أن تصبح الولايات المتحدة إمبراطورية جديدة وأن يكون هدفهم هو الاحتلال العسكري والهيمنة العسكرية على منطقة الخليج من أجل السيطرة على احتياطات النفط في المنطقة uh, Mr. Jeffrey Stenberg from Washington Thank you very much for being with us live on our program That's it. I don't think he was the right guest. I have to talk to our uh, interview producer to tell him that uh, this was a very bad choice. انت من وين جايب لي هذا؟ هذا خرائي يا زلمه ما بيصير هذا. شو هذا واحد متطرف قاعد بيحكي. على ضد امريكا ضد امريكا البلد ويصطفل مش مش هون القضيه قضيه احنا ما قلنا انه هو بيحكي عن بلده وبيحكي عن بلده آه احنا ويصطفل بحلل الزلمه هذا مش تحليل هذا هذا تخريف اللي بيحكيه هذا بيحكي تخريف فيش في منطق فيش في توازن اللي بيحكي كلام مش منطقي هذا ليش ابو بيحكي لك عن بلده وهو عايش لا 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 حبيبي لا لا لو لو مش هيك لا لا مش هيك لو عندك برنامج من بر الجزيره اه جيبه يحكي هذا رايه مزبوط بس مش محلل سياسي في نشرة أخبار في نشرة الأخبار بدها واحد متزن عقلاني يعني بدك تجيب واحد يحلل ما له وما عليه هذا أعطانا وجهة نظر واحدة بس بيزنس از يوجوال إيراك أندين إيراك أندين إيراك But between us If I'm offered a job with Fox I will take it to change the Arab nightmare into American dream. I still have that dream. Maybe I will never be able to do it, but uh, I have plans for my children. When they finish their high school, I will send them to America to study there. I will pay for their study and they will stay there. The big thing for my generation is for these two perspectives, my, my perspective, the Western perspective, and the Arab perspective, to understand each other better. 
it's our responsibility to reach out and try to understand their perspective, and I hope they feel the same way, that they need to, to reach out and understand our perspective, because of truly the two worlds are, are colliding at, at a rapid rate right now. Al Jazeera, they've got the best food. Best food, Al Jazeera. They're also the nicest guys. I'm so thankful because I'm not a girl. You know why? Because <laughs> I fall in love with him directly. <laughs> all right, Johnny. All yeah, right. It's so kind. Oscar. Yeah, yeah, Oscar. Okay. <laughs> Joke around. That's embarrassing. I've met so many great Arabs since I've been here, and I've been trying to learn Arabic, and they've been helping me. It's really been fun. You're welcome to come see us in our workspace if you like. Yeah. Very small. Nice. Yeah, respected Al Jazeera in the sense that, I mean, they were certainly doing something that had never been done in the Arab world, and they were reaching a lot of viewers, and they were ruffling a lot of feathers, which is you know, a great part of journalism. It's a large part of what Al Jazeera is struggling with is how, when there isn't a sort of a long tradition of being independent and being able to say anything you want in any one of these sort of kingdoms, how do you establish that now? Uh, we've got, you know, 200 years of being able to build on that in our country, and I think that helps journalism. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Coalition governments have identified a list of key regime leaders who must be pursued and brought to justice. This list has been provided to coalition forces on the ground in several forms to ease identification when contact does occur. And this deck of cards is one example of what we provide to soldiers, out, soldiers and Marines out in the field with the faces of the individuals and what their role is. Go back here, please. Um, your deck of 55 most wanted, um, does that include the former information minister? Because every pack needs a joker. <laughs> well said, Jeff. Well said. I was wondering if we can get uh, uh, copies of these um, cards as a part of the press pack that we never got at the media center here. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Card packs. Our focus would go elsewhere, and uh, we don't have enough to distribute here, uh, but we can certainly make them available for you to look at if you'd like to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks very much. This argument has gone in there. We've just spent the last 10 minutes talking with the general, and he's not giving up the pack. But what what, if we've only got one pack, could we just have them mounted on a board each. and just put them on the wall, and, and we can just board, we can all just have a look then? We've had this discussion for the last we not 10 minutes. just borrow it for half an hour and take pictures, okay, and then I, give it back to him. I know how to say no in several languages. I can just keep repeating it, so that's where we start. Well, okay, but that is unbelievably inept yeah. to do that. To do that... Well, I'll be sure to convey well, your thoughts yeah. to him. Well, do. This, okay. is, well, this isn't you. just a military operation, it's a I media guess. operation. Well, yeah, and that is an incredibly that. inept thing to do, to offer that up and then not have them available. Yeah. It is yeah. unbelievably yeah. inept. Do you come feel out? that you're more important? No, no, it's not yeah, more it's, important. It's it's the fact that it, no, you just said it was more important, and it's not. Right now, we've got a I'm sorry, madam. It's common sense to have two packs, isn't it? You put one on a wall. I mean, it's common sense. next time I run a war, I'll remember. He's gone with his pack of cards. He won't give them up. <laughs> we're not here to give uh, uh, coverage to the press. Uh, we're here to liberate the people of Iraq. So al although you may not be seeing a blow-by-blow uh, -blow account of what's happening, uh, rest assured we're on our mission and we're completing our goals. I'm not even allowed to touch the North Sea again. All right, bye. They wanted to know if I had the deck of cards or if I could get them. Sure. <laughs> if I had them, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. No, I mean, that thing at the press conference today, he holds up his deck of cards. These are the 55 members of the regime that we want dead or alive. Gone. All right, we'll do this. Sources, specifically, how they think that uh, General Brooks mentioned uh, right out of the game today, evidence, as you mentioned, that senior arrival. said, could I have them for an hour? He said, no. Now, they've shown us the cards by holding them up in the briefing, but beyond that, are not really willing to release them just quite yet. Um, we, weren't, we haven't uh, gotten actually to look at the cards up close yet. Of course, one question uh, Ed raises was, uh, who's going to be the joker in the pack? They say the list includes all of the regime's top leaders and many more. Yeah, it's super shield.
اعطنا استن بالماي تقول تقول لي الصيغه اه راح اعطيك هذول هذول صور وردت للتو تشينج الحزن يخيم على عاصمة الرشيد وحالة من الكآبة ترتسم على محيا أهلها الذين استنزفتهم عمليات القصف المتواصلة وأحالت حياتهم إلى جحيم غير أنها لم تكثر من عزيمتهم طارق أيوب الجزيرة بغداد ماجور بارترد واتس ذا سيتويشن ناو إن بغداد We are operating in and around the city of Baghdad and that we have had special forces on the ground in and out of the city of Baghdad for some time now. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Hey, babe. Hi. How are you? Hi. So what about these pictures of tanks going into Baghdad and people waving and smiling then? What's all that about? Tanks entering Baghdad and people waving? Yeah. That's part of the propaganda war because uh, according to the BBC in Al Jazeera, there are no tanks inside Baghdad. That's bullshit. Gosh. Okay, when, when do you finish your shift today? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock tonight. Oh. Okay, Bobby. وأعتقد أن السؤال الأول الذي سيوجه اليوم إلى البريغادي الجنرال فينسيت بروكس أن يعطينا اليوم دليلا مرئيا عبر شريط فيديو عن السيطرة التامة على على مطار بغداد الدولي وأيضا عن توغل ودخول القوات الأمريكية إلى قلب بغداد So how's everything going? We didn't know what's going on. You said something, Iraq said something. What's happened? We know. We, we want to know what's going on. The the operation continues. You know, uh, we are we are in Baghdad, and and so you know when when we want to. What's mean exactly in Baghdad? Right now, right now, I I can't I can't point out on a map because yeah, yeah, yeah. that would that would. Let you know where everybody is, but uh, we'll see at the, at the press conference. Did they, did they tell you what would be at this press conference today? They did. They came up. Okay. It's Jessica Lynch. Jessica Lynch, the the, the, the rescue mission. You remember the girl that we rescued? Yes, yes, yes. yes they're going. To, yes, they're going to tell you more about her today. But we need yeah. to have we need to have more details on what's going on in Baghdad. Baghdad. Yes, That's the yes. Most I know. Important. I know. I know. I know. He will. He will try Jessica, to do his, his best. Is, uh, I know. Someone used to. Okay. <laughs> In the situation that we're, we're talking about here with Private Lynch, uh, as you know, on about the 23rd of March, her uh, 507th maintenance company was ambushed. A number of the uh, members of that maintenance company were killed, a number were captured, and a number were unaccounted for, she being one of them. I was a bit upset that they spent so much time giving us, uh, you know, all of the minute by minute, uh, this happened, she said this, we said that, <clears throat> this was our objective. And on a day when you have uh, forces going into Baghdad, wasn't part of the regular briefing. I can't give you any better answer than that. I, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable. I know where those guys were. Beyond that, I'm going to leave it there. Good try, though. Seems like there's a effort to manage the news in an unmanageable situation. They tried it in the first Gulf War. This time it was supposed to be different. Well, thank you very much for giving us that level of detail uh, about Jessica Lynch. <coughs> I had a couple follow-up questions about her. They buried the lead, and they're pretty good at it. Hi, how are you? Excuse me. Fine. Uh, do you have five minutes for French daily newspaper? Sure. I'm from Liberation. You're from what? Liberation. Liberation. The... You felt like it lacked context? Yes, there, was, there were no context at all. You know, it's well, I gotta tell you, you, this was a struggle for us. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, the last thing you want to do is broadcast to the world, yeah. which includes your enemy, yeah. exactly where your troops are, yeah. exactly yeah, what yeah, they're doing. Yeah, yeah or exactly when they'll be there and what yeah. they plan on doing. So it was a real challenge for us yeah. at this level. Yeah. We wanted to give 
an extra, a strategic overview, a mosaic of what was going on out there. But we found if we did it too well, there was so much information coming out from the battlefield. If we tied it all together too well, it was a perfect intelligence report for anybody watching on the other side. Yeah. So we wanted to put out as much information as we could here without putting our troops at risk. Yankee Doodle went to town, riding there on Sunday. Found some people living there, killed them all by Monday. <laughs> okay, let's see these liberating nice guys. That's how Mr. Bush is preaching his democratic war. يعني هل حرية بوش حرية بوش وديمقراطية الشعب العربي والإسلامي والأجنبي ديمقراطية أنا أروح أشتريها بستة أنفار أنا ما أريد هاي الحرية ما أريد هاي الديمقراطية وأخويا وأطفالي راحوا من عندي وهذا اللي ترونه ها من الدماء والجروح واللي الدمار اللي صاب داري هذا بالضبط ما على الأرجح ما ينتويه أو ما أراده من أشعله هذا الانفجار أن أن يزرعوا الفتنة والانقسام بين المحررين الأمريكيين والشعب العراقي وإني لا أظن from Syria Lieutenant Rushing thank you very much Lieutenant Rushing I was very happy because we kept him like this for 15 minutes it's our way to torture people in in my office we say it all the time on the other side of the wall there no spin don't spin it, and we catch ourselves doing it. I catch myself doing it, taking an event and, and, and spinning it so strongly in, in one light that, uh, that I have to pull back and say, well, wait a second, wait a second. That's, that's not what I'm here to do. But when you feel that a reporter is trying to present it in a, in a, in a very certain light, then you end up having to defend it kind of in a polarizing effect like I was talking about, way over on this side of the middle, so that the story will hopefully end up back in the middle. See what I'm saying? I mean, this morning it was the funniest report ever, BBC. And he was surrounded by a bunch of Iraqi kids and they were saying, uh, chanting against Bush. But he didn't speak, he didn't know Arabic. So he hit the name Bush. And I'm surrounded by a bunch of children cheering President Bush. Then they weren't saying, <laughs> they were basically cursing Bush. Allah il ambush, Allah il ambush. And he thought they were cheating Bush. Goddamn Bush, Goddamn Bush. <laughs> if you've got Al Jazeera day after day after day pounding the people in the region with things that are not true, which is what they do, uh, it isn't easy. Free if media got... means uh, nowadays for people like Rumsfeld, Bush, and Cheney, is the media that is there to defend the values uh, of these people. They believe in these values. So for them, defending these values is uh, right. Obstructing uh, the progress of their own agenda is misinformation. Down! Down! Get down! All these images, who is going to miss all of this? I mean, everybody has a satellite dish on. Even a simple Bedouin can run it on a generator in the middle of the desert. They can see for themselves now. The Americans, they'll just radicalize people more and more. There'll be no more room for people like me who speak softly and rationally. The people will push the likes of us aside and they take things into their own hands. A 
believe me, nobody is crying over Saddam Hussein. Nobody is going to cry over any Arab leader. But the problem is, it's really degrading to an Arab to watch another Arab capital ransack. Did we ransack the, the capital? You bombed, you bombed the hell out of Baghdad. We bombed the hell out of Baghdad with the most precision munitions oh, in the world. Please, we please, could save please, a lot of money. Right. We could have bought, what, a hundred normal bombs, what we pay for one of the precision bombs. They yeah, were incredibly those pre accurate those precision compared bombs to the carpet so bombing. Many civilians, my friends. Uh, compared to the carpet bombing of, 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 the, of Germany, the, regard, the carpet bombing of Tokyo. I mean, the number of civilians killed, I mean, it is no justification. When a viewer sees that, see, the bombing of Dresden was before the days of television. Since Vietnam, the picture has changed. And now in the Arab world, of course, we, we, we've come to discover the, the wonders of, of television much, <laughs> much later than the rest of the world. And uh, when you see the massacres in Palestine and the, how people are butchered, the idea of another Arab capital occupied is, is really fueling anger. Truth ultimately <laughs> finds its way to people's ears and eyes and hearts. And uh, I, I don't worry about that over the long term. Is, does it make me sad to see television saying things that are flat not true and people printing things in that part of the world that's flat not true? Do, children being taught things that are flat not true? Yes, it bothers me. Rumsfeld called this incitement. I call it true journalism. The only true journalism in the world. Nothing else. I received a phone call from uh, our correspondent in Baghdad saying that there's a big fight around our office in Baghdad. So I put them on air, live, and we heard everything, all the fighting going on, but uh, none of our correspondents was able to go on top of the roof so as to be with us live, because they were they said it was too dangerous. But they said if we can sneak out, we can try to manage it. At 6.47, the camera that was filming got stuck with the picture of Tariq Ayyub on the roof. Shil the camera, shil the camera. Shil it on Tariq, put it on the I shouted at them, telling them to move the camera out of the face of this guy because uh, he has nothing to do with uh, the event, the fighting. And they moved the camera. Ten minutes later, I was on the phone with the other correspondent and he said there's a plane turning over us and now it's coming towards us and it's, he said, picking down, nose down, which means a formation of attack. And the American plane came and launched the missiles against our office. And the explosion killed Tariq Ayyub. When you announce that one of your staff was hurt, you expect phone calls from the families of all these reporters and cameramen. We received only one phone call from the wife of Tariq Ayyub, saying, what happened to Tariq? We told her, he didn't say it's Tariq. She said, I know, my heart tells me it's Tariq, and something happened to him. What can you say, uh, tell her? So, 
was a hell of a morning that time. Everybody was crying. Then you saw. You can see their tears coming in. Except me. I managed to stay firm and not to cry because it's too easy. For me, that was a crime that should be avenged, or at least investigated. Jim, as you can well imagine, with 200 journalists inside this room and the military standing at the podium, the question of the day was about three incidents. Uh, the strike against Al Jazeera in the very early hours of the morning, followed by a strike against Abu Dhabi television, uh, followed by the shot that was fired at the Palestine Hotel. Uh, these were uh, questions that were repeated several times, different variations, but basically the same answer from the military, that the battlefield is a dangerous place. The only nearly safe position is of the embedded reporters with coalition troops uh, asked about what could journalists do to surrender, uh, whether they should put white sheets out of the rooms or whatever. Uh, they said basically that you shouldn't be in this location. In the run-up to this war, the Pentagon repeatedly warned journalists that they should not be in Baghdad because precisely this kind of thing would arise. Now, some might argue, some cynics might argue, that they simply didn't want us there watching while a particularly bloody episode at the end of this war unfolded. What's a journalist's take on what happened in Baghdad today? When you talk about killing three journalists with three separate strikes, mm -hmm. uh, journalists tend to stick together, mm -hmm. and uh, just like soldiers stick together. Mm -hmm. I wonder how those two houses and why they were targeted, the Abu Dhabi and Al Jazeera. Uh, were they taking fire? I didn't get my, my question answered. Ahmed, the Americans are releasing a statement that says, According to commanders on the ground, coalition forces came under significant enemy fire from the building where Al Jazeera journalists were working, and consistent with the inherent right of self-defense, coalition forces returned fire. Sadly, an Al Jazeera correspondent was killed in the exchange. I, I've just sent, I've just faxed it to you on your fax, so it should be there now. Give it to the producers. Okay. All right. Here. Bye. The first objective of sending these missiles on the offices of Al Jazeera is to tell Al Jazeera, you're not siding 100% with us against Saddam Hussein, so we are going to punish you. We are sending this, these missiles on you to kill, to kill people, okay? We have received the message. We acknowledge the receipt of this message. If we really wanted to shut down media coverage, our army of tens of thousands could do it. And we electronically jam or do whatever we want to do, but if the, if the end is what they want is to shut down the, 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 they want to turn the media off. I mean, by firing into a group of journalists, you turn the media up. I, so I, I don't think so. I, I don't think so. We cannot compete with the, the United States of America. We are a tiny channel in a tiny country. Uh, what can we do? We just shut up and try to go on, uh, do our job. And that's it. Welcome, colleagues, and thank you for attending uh, what is a grave uh, period for us all, I believe. Our late Tarek lived and died for his and our professional integrity. Let's hope it wasn't all in vain. I think we're open for questions now. The lady over there. Thank you. I'm Ann Bernard from the Boston Globe newspaper in the U.S. and as a journalist, I'm sorry for what's happened. Um, what I wanted to know is what is the latest communication you had with uh, representatives of the U.S.? Are you satisfied with their apology? Was there an apology? Uh, we have been expecting for a while uh, for the results of an investigation, which unfortunately came and uh, judging by the reports of eyewitnesses, it doesn't really fly and we are hoping that perhaps more light would be shed in the future on the issue. Now, I think we managed to contact the wife of our late colleague, Tariq. She will deliver a message through telephone from Amman in English for you. Please, my, my husband and I have been trying to reveal the truth for the world. Please do not conceal it for any conditions, not for the public opinion, not for the American policy, not for the British policy. Please be honest only for this time, for the sake of all those people who died. Innocent people, not military, not militia, not people in the army. Please tell the truth. Only this one. Thank you very much. 
you all could be Tariq. Let's not let that happen. Let's do something about it. Tariq, ya Shahid! Ya Tariq, ya Shahid! Annak wallah ma bin Hid! Annak wallah ma bin Hid! Sheikh Barak, welcome back. Welcome home. Welcome home. We miss you guys. Habibi. You are most welcome. You are home. Habibi. Shrubun shi. Coffee. Tea. Sure. Coffee. I was in Baghdad first. Then I went to Musal city. And uh, uh, people are very nice. People are very nice. But they, they after hitting our office in Baghdad, Everybody was scared. They didn't want to receive us because they said you are targeted. So if you if you start your machines here, the the American airplanes will will target you. This is shame. This is shame. We are media. We are not supposed to be targeted. No, no, we are not ready. Hold on. Fina na khutsura Baghdad. Mix. Fina na Okay, you can go to your to the next item. I don't have any correspondence for Baghdad right now. Okay, uh, let me just bring you up to date. Uh, the Americans are deploying all around me. We just heard a large tank round go up, but uh, let's go over here and talk to the guys unfolding the uh, stars and stripes. What's your name, mate? What's your name? Miguel Jimenez. Good to see you. <laughs> Get that flag going. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> Geographically, what are we looking at? Whereabouts is this? What, what, what does it actually mean, this point where the coalition troops Well, are? this is one of the, the main squares in Baghdad. It's a kind of focal point. So I suppose for the British viewers, it's kind of like Trafalgar Square. Is that a statue of Saddam? Um, I can see this. Okay, right. يا سلام ما فيش عسكري ما فيش حارس ما في بوليس بلدية يدافع يا حرام وين اختفوا العسكر؟ احنا نعمل بحالنا هيك يعني مهما كان اللي بيكرهوا له النظام أو أو مش طايقينه أو شيء بس إنه عيب علينا نعمل هيك بحالنا قدام العالم قدام I just I still can't believe it. So I I don't know what to say really. It's, I I can't. I it's it's for us. It's it's really shocking how quickly the uh, the regime fell. Where is the Republican Guard? Where is the Iraqi Army? There must be somewhere. <laughs> they couldn't have just vanished. A lot of young men and women who died to make this moment happen, guys. Yes. A lot of reporters, too. Good morning, Katie. I am here with the Director of Strategic Communications for United States Central Command. What are the most striking images that you've seen so far? Well, I think the most striking images are any time you see uh, women, children, and men in Iraq celebrate. Uh, these are good images. Uh, it, it's important images and clearly they're, they're happy. They're, they're almost liberated if not fully liberated. You look at these pictures and you have to stop and take a second and remember those, those Americans and UK soldiers and others who have died to make these moments happen. Thank you very much for your insights this morning. Katie, back to you. Thanks a lot. Wasn't that Thank powerful? You. you just Thank think you. all the folks that died to make those moments happen. It's, uh, it's amazing. Is that okay? Yes, come back to us though. Thank you. You did great. You did great. The Americans played the media element intelligently. On the 9th of April, the American troops went down the Ferdos Square. It was a show. It was a media show after having bombed Al Jazeera and some part of Abu Dhabi television. They did their show. 
they brought with them some people, supposedly Iraqis, cheering up. These people were not Iraqis. I lived in Iraq. I was born there. I was raised there. Okay, I can recognize an Iraqi accent. For me, the most telling part was when the American soldier hung the American flag over Saddam's head. I think somebody must have told him, don't be that obvious, we didn't tell you to do this. Put it down. There's not a sense of celebration, it's a sense of relief. They, they're seeing Saddam Hussein disappearing. That makes them feel like a big burden is taken off their shoulders, but they are not welcoming the Americans as true liberators. It was a very clever idea what they did. Of course, they did it on purpose. They knew they were coming to the square where all the journalists were, where everybody was going to be live and was going to forget everything else that they had done. They, they were going to forget 24 hours what had happened. They were going to forget all the civilian casualties. They were going to forget everything. All they, that was going to be remembered was the statue. And I bet you they, they brought in these, these teenage guys who like broke the statue, put it down. They brought them in with them. Because if you notice, they're all sort of the same age, no women, and they, they all went in and it was the same people on the square. You couldn't see more people gathering from the houses around. No one came down to the street to see what was happening because people are scared. And these people who came in, how come, did, how come one of them had the flag of Iraq before 1991 in his pocket? Has he just been waiting there for 10 years with the flag? on that square? <laughs> I don't think so. But this is not something that the US, like media, would talk about. The show was meant for the international media. Here we are in Baghdad. The war is finished. Major combat operations in Iraq have ended. In the Battle of Iraq, the United States and our allies have prevailed. The regime of Saddam Hussein has passed into history. Thanks to the courage and the might of our military, the American people are more secure. Thanks to the courage and might of our military, the Iraqi people are now free. Now that Iraq is liberated, the United Nations should lift economic sanctions on that country. The whole war actually is like an American movie. You know the end. You know who's the hero. You know the bad guys. <laughs> They're going to die. <laughs> and, but you still watch because you want to know how it's going to happen and what, what weapons they're going to use to like, do it. So, I mean, we lost Tariq. I still can't believe that. You know, I, I, still, I, st I still cannot like, sort of get into. And then we lost Baghdad. <laughs> And then what are we going to lose next? Do you know where the Baghdadis and the people of Mosul and how they're organizing their lives as from maybe this morning or this afternoon? From mosques now. We're using the loudspeakers. There is no other way of communication. There is no government, no authority, no civil order. They're carrying sticks and things to defend their property. I mean, these people, I see, these, these are all Peshmerga. Look at them. 
They are the Kurds. They are the ones who helped the Americans throughout this campaign. They are walking out with sackfuls of money. And you know why they, they are ripping them to pieces? Because in the Kurdish areas they use a different, the old version of the Iraqi dinar. This is meaningless. That's why they... We're in the middle of anarchy. But I want you to find out what it was that stuff that was they were throwing in the air, whether that was like their old currency. It's hilarious. It's almost like the price is right. Woo. Looting was done by Iraqis. That's the bottom line. And so it was really done under the noses of the Iraqi population. I mean, the question is who did the looting? I think that's also another issue. Well, according to Brooks, I mean, that, that answer today was just ridiculous. He suggested that Iraqis were somehow supposed to be responsible for preventing the looting at that time, which you say is still during intense combat operations. How some person with a conscience was supposed to stop a bunch of riled up looters from going into the museum, I don't know. I mean, you needed a tank there and guys with guns to stop it. The nation deserves some how? responsibility. How? How? <laughs> you guys took over the city. How? How can you expect people to, like, Stand up so and you don't think the looters are at all responsible for The looters happened? are, but the people right. who didn't want it to be looted shouldn't be held responsible for preventing the no, chaos that erupted because you guys went in. There is a responsibility there, the Iraqi people, to, to create their own situations where they protect their cultural sites. We don't want to occupy Baghdad. But you are. We you don't are. want to keep but, troops here. But you are, you are occupying it right no. now. Well, As we speak, you, you occupy Baghdad. Which is something you, you want us to do because you want us no, to stop the no, looting. No, no. Uh, regardless, I mean, uh, you no, do. If we pulled out the you, looting you do, and the reparations yeah, at but, this but point, you do or you, you don't. Would hold me I mean, yeah, so, so I'm, I'm not wrong in saying that you occupy Baghdad right now. Okay. You do occupy Baghdad. So, so when you do report that, you say right now and that it's temporary, right? Regardless, maybe you can justify that to me. I understand you. I understand okay. where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. I understand the West. I understand the mentality. I understand the American army. I understand what's going on. I understand Iraq. But to an average viewer, what do they see on television? American tanks in the center of Baghdad. That's what they see. That's what I'm trying to convey to, me, to you. an occupation will yes, be us you, rolling in the center of town and raising the American try flag. To put you, try to put yourself in the place of an average Arab viewer. The Arab viewer sitting in a coffee shop in Cairo, Damascus, Amman, uh, Khartoum, uh, Morocco. Just that simple okay. viewer, that okay. simple person. What you're saying, you're not, yeah. you're not talking facts, you're talking their perception. Yes. I see how it could be perceived as that. I, I, I do. But there's a, a feeling in America that there's a instability in this region. Do you hear what I'm saying, though? That there's yeah, I, I do. I, instability. Yeah, yeah. And so, and but they're going say to the wrong place. Bad. About Pal I mean, it's the Arab-Israeli conflict. Uh, it's I why absolutely don't, agree with yeah, you. Yeah, but why don't they want to do anything about it? They're doing nothing about it, and it's increasing the anger. If I get out of the ring and do anything, I I want to do something with 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 the Palestinian issue. I I don't think Americans are getting good information about it. I really don't. Um, but no American connects the Palestinian issue and this issue. There's, they're completely different. They might as well be on different sides of the world as far as they're concerned. But I've yet to meet anyone in, in this part of the world that sees them as, as, uh, as not the same issue. Every, everyone here sees them as the exact same thing. Misunderstanding is running across the board. And it's, it's so complex. That's why I... I'd like I, to talk about it more. Will you be around in one hour? Or how, how long do y'all have? What time? Oh my goodness, five o'clock. You're welcome to have dinner or whatever. Oh, I would love to. I don't okay. think we can leave base though. You really can't. Oh. Uh, my wife, Kathy, lived in Jerusalem. Oh, yeah. Speaks perfect Hebrew. Oh, wow. And you'd, have, you'd really love talking to her, really. I'll ask, see if I can get permission. If you get permission, you're more than welcome. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, and I'll be back in an hour. Thanks. Okay. okay. History tells us that human beings have short memories. Who thinks now in the United States about what happened in Somalia in 1993. Nobody. Who thinks about what happened in Bosnia-Herzegovina? Nobody thinks about that. History is written by the victors. All what will be left from this war are just scripts and some history books. And that's it. Anyway, good seeing you. Ah. I hope we meet again. Muslim.
life will continue, will go on. There will be other problems. There will be other things to think about. There is one single thing that will be left. Victory. That's it. People like, like victory. They don't like justifications. You don't have to justify. Once you are victorious, that's it.